you know, so, so you know, the shelf.com was where I started. I, I learned many skills. You know, it's then I, part of that was teaching at university, teaching the HR. Obviously, then I was still learned, I was developing my marketing skills there. You know, eventually I left the company because part of my role, say, of writing content and teaching was doing management development. So when you know, and when you're a 21 year old trying to teach managers, they you get found out very easily because managers don't want to know what you know. They want to know what you what you've seen. They want to know, you know, how where you at. You're like, no, I'm too young to have been at anything 10 years ago. I wasn't even in the country, you know. So that sort of frustrated me. So I left that to go and be a manager. And a part of my new role in the, in the, in the children's charity was setting up a whole internet, uh, giving so trying to create a website for them, giving them a strategy to, to make money to try and use the internet, so social media, email, CRM, and so on. So, you know, and that's I've developed ever since. You see, um, the conversation is really uh, fascinating and uh, is is important for me also. Apart from the fact that it is important for our demography for. Mm-hmm. The people that we are serving, yeah. um, the African diaspora, and in this case, also the Africans in Africa. Uh, why I say that specifically is that uh, the internet, I see it as a leveler. Yes. In that the moment you are connected to the grid, everybody is almost equal. What separates you now is the value that you are adding. Yes. Whoa. Which... Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, I agree. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll go with you on that one. Okay. Carry on. Play that. Yeah. Okay. Which means now that somebody somewhere inside Urumi mm. or in in Abekuta mm. or in some village in Congo or in Canada or in New York sort of have we don't have the same opportunity. I know, but we sort of have almost the same opportunity yeah. now. Because if you can add a good value, if you can add good value to the market, the market is going to pay you. Yes. yes. I remember a very nice story coming out from India. A woman, she I don't think she even understand anything about the internet. She just started to do video about cooking. Mm. This woman suddenly began to have millions and millions of views. Her channel blew up. She didn't go to Harvard University. She's not from a big city in India. So I'm trying to look at this possibility now for us as Africans and African diaspora to be able to tap into the greed and make something out of ourselves. Yeah. But I want you to look at it from the point of view of content creation. Yeah, now you, what you and now are in the same place on in terms of the, uh, the, what the internet could do for people. I fully, I, I agree with you entirely, right? You know, so the, only, the the issue for me is this. You know, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about content in a second. If that's all right. You know, here's the issue for me: the, you know, the democratization is there, it's possible, right? But the small man is being held to ransom. You know, the, 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 let me give me a second to explain, right? So you now, part of the reason. So I, I went from this my startup when I was when I was young doing internet marketing, content marketing. And then I moved on to a job, training now to actually be a manager. Then when I got bored in that 15 years later, I thought, okay, what do I do now? And, you know, I guess my thing is helping people to have a voice, you know, to be, you know, to, to empowerment. That's, that's what floats my boat. That's what really keeps, that's what excites me. And then, so when I looked around me in 20, you know, 2008, just after the big crash, I looked around you know, and, and, you know, I think I had, I had one of the kids I was working with. Yeah. So literally, I, the, you know, this kid had a marvelous, you know, a black Ugandan girl, you know, and she had a fantastic idea. You know, she was doing drop shipping. So selling things that other, that other people make and then try to sell it via her website. You know, by 2012, you know, this, this young lady, you know, she made British handmade women's brogues you know oxford shoes you know so oxford shoes and they're mainly for men but this was a women's pair of you know, handmade shoes and it just it, the time coincided with, with the olympics the london olympics and you know, so the, you know, this lady this young lady had this amazing shoes with a union jack on the sole high quality handmade you know even low price called it that you know and literally she could not sell a single pair of them. I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken. You know, I was devastated for her. 
So I made it my mission to help us sell those shoes. That's how I got back into marketing after leaving for so many years, I run a charity. You know, so you know, when, when you look at that in, in the context of your idea of the, of the, of the, the level that the internet is, I call it the democratization, yeah, you realize that the small man still can't, you know, it's not as, it's, it's not as fair to the small businesses to achieve their business aims. You know, it's good for access. Of course it is. What it's not good for is making money. You know, it's not good for J- Joe Blogs in Irua to sell their products to European people. It's good to make your videos on YouTube. It's good to have your podcast. It's good to do many things. It's good to be a star on Facebook. But if you actually want to sell, people still buy only from the big companies, the Amazons of this world. Now, do you know how many, like, I've had clients, right? When people click on when people click on your Google Ads, right? They click on your ads. They like what they see. They like they're looking for what you sell. They click on your ad. They go to your landing page and they, they decide. Ooh, I don't know who that person is, so I'm going to go back and buy from Amazon. It's so heartbreaking. Now, for me, that's what destroys my soul. That's why I do what I do. That's what keeps me going because we must correct that picture. Something's wrong somewhere. The small business is not doing what they should be doing to build trust with people, to get the reputation, brand awareness. For people, for people to actually, when they come to the website, they think, oh, I know, I, know, I know who they are. I'm going to buy it from them. I'm not just talking about Nigerian companies, but either, by the way. I'm talking about you know, the, every company, every shop on the high streets in this country, they're in trouble because they haven't got an online presence yet, which is going to buy, which is going to buy them that trust, that awareness, that, you know, that thing that's going to make people buy from them when they need what they sell. It's, it's so weird. You know? it's, I say, you know, that, that's, why, that's why I do what I do, really. I want to I wanna correct that equation. I want to make it genuinely fair. You know, I want to make e-commerce fair. You know, for, no, the, the access, okay, we've got that now. E-commerce is nowhere near fair at all. It's rigged in front of the favor of all the big companies, and they just keep selling and making money. And we, you know, the rest of us are like idiots in the background, saying this internet thing is great, but we haven't learned how to use it yet. All right, I like that. <laughs> that is a key word. <laughs> We have all learned how to use it, mm. which means it is there. Yes. It is there to be used. Yes. How can we use it? What do uh, the average African diaspora content creator need to know so they can properly tap into the power of internet? Right. You know, great, great question. You know, it's just, I mean, you know, generally good question. That's... You know, this is what, again, this is what excites me every day. This is what I, I live for. You know, look, like I say, like, let's talk about the fact that you have to have a goal behind creating content. You know, it's for, if, you, if, if all you're doing was, you know, if all you want to be is a YouTuber, the word's there for you already. It's there now. Nothing's stopping you at all. You have a phone. You have data. You have access to the internet. Do you even know, do your content? Like the, the, like the Indian woman you mentioned, you know, you can be a star if you start now. You know, what if you are an e-commerce company where you actually sell what you want people to actually pay you for? You know, you need to have a different mind. You need to think differently, right? You say, no, the problem is that, you know, one, we haven't, like, many, many of the African companies, or, you know, companies in, in Nigeria and or in any other African country, really, they haven't got, they haven't got the ambition to win you know they haven't got the growth mindset you know they, they you know look if you know how many times i've spoken to people and they say to me i just want to open a food shop and I'm, I'm just i I'm just run my food shop i'm saying why because you know, they think a food shop there can only be one and that one has to be on the only one that they have on the street so i'm saying to them look kfc was one shop mcdonald's was one shop once they had a vision to go global from day one, you know, what's your vision? You know, and once you have a vision, well, you know, if you can imagine, you know, reaching, being on every high street in the world, then we can work towards it. But if you never have that vision, we can never work to, you know, we're going nowhere. 
And what happens is that you're going to have one shop in time, you're going to run out of customers, or you're going to shrink and shrink and shrink and die. This is a reality. If I, you know, I've had companies in Nigeria who, who make things, that they make great crafts things, you know, but they haven't got the ambition to do it well enough or enough of it to sell to an international audience. Those who try fail because they do the wrong things.